I'd like to share with all of you. Uh, 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 I'd like to say, share with you a quotation by Jeffrey Moore. Big without big data analytics, companies are building. Uh, our companies are blind and deaf and wandering out onto the web like a deer on a freeway. So, with that note, we will quickly uh, start. Uh, I'm pretty sure by now all of you must be familiar, especially since we all are academicians, we are familiar with what is called as the DIKW pyramid, uh, which stands for Data, Information, Knowledge and Wisdom Pyramid. Uh, so the flow of information or the flow of data goes in this manner, data, when you arrange data, data are, are actually raw facts, when you arrange data in a certain sequence in a meaningful way, um, if we call that as information, when you utilize information to take any, any key decisions, then it is referred to as uh, uh, the knowledge and knowledge club with perspective or cl uh, uh, knowledge club with uh, uh, experience we call that as wisdom so this is why this is what is referred to as the uh, dikw pyramid and the reason why i wanted to stress on them uh, uh, is because uh, uh, th we have wonders would be using softwares like spreadsheet, the Microsoft Excel, eViews, SPSS, because we're trying to uh, mine the data that is available with us. We're trying to convert that into information. We're trying to convert that into knowledge. And uh, also at the same time, uh, we just want to leave a small note with all the participants, just in case if you are having any difficulty uh, in terms of the audibility i request you to quickly um, uh, just in case if you're having any difficulty with, res with respect to the rest you could note in the chat box okay so uh, with that note we will move forward from them uh, now what exactly software is 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 a software uh, it is a computer application which will help an organization to carry out analysis and then also with a storage of data uh, in tabular form so basically it helps to store data in the form of table uh, in in the form of a table um, so this is what is referred to as a spreadsheet software now one unique aspect of a spreadsheet software is this uh, it will comprise of rows and columns. Okay? A spreadsheet software will comprise of rows and columns. So there are a number of spreadsheet softwares which are available. We have like Google Sheet, iWork, uh, LibreOffice, Lotus Symphony, etc. So there are a number of softwares which are available, uh, which, which we can use as a spreadsheet software. Now, of all of them, uh, Microsoft Excel is probably the software which is widely used because of its instant success. Now, Microsoft, uh, uh, the, 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 if, you, if you look at the history of Microsoft Excel, Microsoft Excel is, uh, uh, um, is Microsoft Excel is the old software. I'm just going to quickly disable my video for some time because uh, I think they is a feedback that uh, some of you are having a hard time. So let me just try and disable the video and see if that will improve the reception. Okay, so uh, so talking about the Microsoft uh, uh, Excel, it is a really uh, a old software. It, the history of Microsoft goes back as, as old as 1982 where the company came out with a software called as Multiplan. Unfortunately, back then, they had a very stiff competition from another company called as Lotus, which came out with a product called as Lotus 1, 2, 3. And Microsoft was not able to sustain the competition. So it, it really lost some amount of uh, market share. But later in 1985, uh, with the introduction of Apple Macintosh, uh, Microsoft came back. And from there, it had been an, a success because uh, there were regular uh, updates which were provided. And as a result of which, uh, it, Microsoft Excel enjoyed a huge commercial adoption. So a lot of companies uh, decided to use uh, Microsoft uh, for their office uses. Now, today, Microsoft has got a very good market share because of its uh, smartphone releases and also because of uh, cloud integration. Uh, so uh, that is where, uh, that's a little bit about Microsoft Excel. Uh, 
Now, uh, quickly, we will look at uh, the parts of Microsoft Excel. Uh, so, uh, since we are starting from basics and then we will be moving on to intermediate level. Uh, we will start off with uh, the basics and then we will move on to an intermediate level. And also at the end of four days, uh, the presentation that I'm using, I shall be sharing that with all of you as a takeaway so that you could, uh, uh, you could use it uh, for your practice on data analysis using Microsoft Excel. Uh, so the various parts of uh, Microsoft Excel, uh, we will we will look at it together. Okay, so uh, uh, in Microsoft Excel, uh, basically the screen that uh, where my cursor is pointing out right now, this is referred to as the uh, this is referred to as the menu bar. Okay, so this is referred to as the menu bar. Uh, menu bar is where we would be having access to. Uh, access to uh, uh, access to various functionalities of the uh, of the uh, of Microsoft Excel. Now, one good feature about uh, uh, Microsoft Excel is that what is called as a ribbon main bar. Now, which means if you if you quickly uh, uh, scroll over to this particular arrow that you see over here, and if you click it, um, it the, the the menu bar will collapse. Okay, so the menu bar will collapse, and uh, this uh, this is referred to as a ribbon bar. Now, some of the parts which is very important for us uh, from our uh, sessions point of view, uh, this is referred to as the sheet bar. Okay, this is referred to as the sheet bar because sheet bar is what we will be using for it, for toggling in Microsoft Excel between the various sheets. This is what we will be using for toggling between the various sheets. Also, another important section uh, in Microsoft Excel, this is referred to as the address bar. Okay, this is referred to as the address bar. Now, please remember, Microsoft Excel is a spreadsheet software. And one of the unique aspects of the spreadsheet software is that it arranges data in the form of columns and rows. Okay, it arranges data in the form of columns and rows. So an address bar will help us to understand where exactly are we scrolling onto. Okay, it will help us to understand where exactly are we scrolling onto. So if I were to understand where my cursor is, uh, you can just quickly look at the address bar and you will be able to identify where exactly the cursor is standing at. Another important section that we would be uh, requiring is this particular part of Microsoft Excel, and this is referred to as the formula bar. A formula bar is basically the section of Microsoft Excel that feedback. Uh, am I audible? Um, uh, yes. oh, sir, uh, it's, it's audible. Sometimes you are unmuting yourself. Okay. Okay. Keep, keep the phone uh, uh, close to your mouth so it will be audible, more audible. Okay. Okay, sir. Okay, so this is referred to as the formula bar because this is a section of Microsoft Excel that we would be using for entering the formulas and also for entering our data. So for, for example, in this particular case, if I had to enter the data, uh, then you would notice that the data automatically gets reflected in the, uh, in the formula bar over here. So uh, the formula uh, bar is what we will be using in Microsoft Excel uh, to enter the and enter the details. Now, another uh, important aspect that we have to uh, understand in Microsoft Excel uh, is how exactly does Excel go about organizing data? Okay, uh, so we have to understand how exactly does uh, uh, the Excel go about uh, organizing or structuring is its data. So, uh, in Microsoft Excel, what we receive as a file is referred to as a workbook. Okay, what we refer uh, to as a file, or what we perceive to as a file, or whenever.
Whenever we come across a file uh, with the extension .xls or .xlsx, which is for the older versions of uh, Microsoft Excel, uh, what you have to remember is that it is it is an Excel workbook. So this is how exact this is exactly how uh, uh, Microsoft Excel goes about structuring its data. The data gets populated into a cell. Many cells will combine together to form what is called as a sheet. Okay, so uh, many cells will come together, and it, this is called as when many cells come together, it is referred to as a sheet. A number of sheets together will make up what is called as a workbook. Okay, a number of sheets together will make up what is uh, called as a workbook. So the moment you end up saving a workbook. Microsoft will end up storing it as a file. Okay, it will end up uh, storing it as a file. So this this format or uh, this this order with which Excel goes about structuring data is very important uh, for us to uh, uh, understand. So Excel stores information into cell. Many cells will come together and it will form a sheet. Sheets will combine together to form what is called as a workbook. The moment you save a workbook, it is referred to as a file. Now, uh, as we had mentioned before, uh, since Excel is a spreadsheet software, uh, it stores um, uh, it in a tabular form. So, a tabular form, uh, the date each cell. Uh, has a unique coordinate. Now in Excel, these each coordinate is referred to as a cell address. Okay, so each cell has uh, what is uh, each cell has a unique coordinate, and the coordinate is what we call as uh, a cell address. So just like how we would we would receive our letters or parcel in our uh, through post, where the center will have to mention the address, they will have to mention the house number, street. Uh, lane, etc. Likewise, in Excel, every cell has got a unique address, and this address is referred to as a cell address. Now, cell address is of this format: column name followed by a row name. Okay. Column name followed by a row name. Now, columns uh, are uh, for columns are named alphabetically. Okay. Columns. Are named alphabetically and rows are named numerically. So if I were to say cell D5, okay, if I were to give the cell address as D5, what you should understand is that it is column D, row 5. Okay, it is column D and then row 5. Also, the beauty of uh, Microsoft Excel is this that uh, it has got close to 10 lakh 50,000 rows and 16,000 columns. So if you if you put that together, uh, that is a lot of cells. So Excel is a wonderful software which can handle tremendous amount of data. Okay, Excel is designed in such a way that it can handle a tremendous amount of data. But just in case, uh, if you still need uh, uh, the software to handle uh, data beyond this capability, then that's that is when you would need a DBMS database management software, where like you have Microsoft Access or SQL, etc. So Excel, uh, by default, it is it is built up uh, to handle a huge amount of data. Uh, now, uh, another advantage that we have about Microsoft Excel is that uh, Excel, uh, in Excel, uh, like I said, every cell has got a cell address. Okay? Every cell here has got a cell, a unique cell address. So as in when I keep scrolling my cursor, if you would notice the cell addresses are constantly changing. Okay, the cell addresses here are constantly changing. Now, uh, so right now I've scrolled all over to the, the end of, uh, uh, in, terms of, in terms of the columns, I've scrolled right to the end. And if imagine if I were to store some data over here. Okay. Now it is it is very difficult for me to remember the cell address. So in this, uh, what we can do is that we can change the cell address. 
Okay, so I've changed the cell address from the default address to an address called as test. Okay, so I'm just going to enter some values over here. Okay, and I could call this address anywhere in my workbook. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to call back the value that I had entered uh, in that unique cell and I changed the cell address to test. Okay, so I'm going to call that value over here. Now I could call the value by uh, using this syntax is equal to the cell address. Okay, so here, since I changed the cell address, I'm going to put this as test. And you would notice Excel uh, has understood that my um, command right now uh, is to call back the value I had put in cell by the name test and it is calling the value that I'd entered over there. So in the previous cell, I had entered the value was 789 and right now Excel is calling back that value. So this is one unique functionality that we can use in Excel, especially when we are dealing with complex amounts of data. Okay, when we are dealing with complex amounts of data, instead of relying on, uh, on the default, uh, instead of relying on the default uh, cell address, we could change the cell address. So here, imagine uh, I were to um, enter, I have three students and I were to enter these students' marks. And at, at some point of time, I, uh, in a later part of my uh, workbook or my sheet, I will have to call uh, these marks back. So uh, one option is I could remember the default address. So here, the default address is B9. Okay, but this is uh, given by Excel by default, and this is a little difficult for me to remember. So I'm going to change this, and I'm going to enter this as uh, the student's name itself, and I'm going to put this as Melbourne. So at later stages, when I'm working out with my uh, Microsoft Sheet or my Microsoft Workbook, and I, I need to recall the mark of Melvin, then all that I have to do is, is equal to Melvin, and then I press enter, Excel will automatically call the value over. Okay, Excel will automatically call the value over. So this is one functionality that we can use in Microsoft Excel especially when we are dealing with complex amounts of data. We need not depend on the default cell addresses. We have a flexibility, we have a freedom where we could, uh, we could change the cell addresses and we could assign addresses that we desire. So this is one good uh, feature of Microsoft Excel that we could utilize. Uh, now, another... Uh, Okay, now we will move on from here. Now in Excel, there are two kinds of cell references or cell addresses that we can assign. Okay, one is referred to as the relative reference and the second is referred to as the absolute reference. So relative reference is when um, you're okay with the cell value to change as in when you copy the formula from one place to another. Okay, so, uh, but you want, the cell, uh, you want the reference to remain unique, in such cases, we will have to utilize what is called as absolute reference. So I'll just come back to this a little later, uh, but right now, uh, there's one more topic that I will discuss and then I will go back to a demo on, uh, on the cell uh, reference. Uh, and now, whenever we talk about data, we have to remember that data has got two parts. Uh, there is a value and then there is an attribute. So what we refer to as one, two, three, four, this is the value component of data. But the value by itself uh, does not have a meaning unless and until you have an attribute which, de which describes the value. So for example, if I were to say 10 centimeter, now, it is a combination of two parts. There is a value and then there's an attribute. Uh, the value is 10 and that number 10 is making significance because there's an attribute which is describing the value. So the moment you see 10 centimeter, you know that it is a measurement of length. Okay, So just like uh, the value 
and attribute has to go together to understand the data. Uh, in data, in Excel, uh, the, whenever you enter data, uh, it has got two parts. There is something which is referred to as value, and then there is something referred to as a format. Okay, we have something referred to as value, and then we have something which is referred to as format. So here, if you'd notice on, on my presentation, I have entered the same piece of uh, the same value, but it looks different because the format which is attached with each of each each of the display is different. Okay, so here, uh, for example, in in the second uh, row, uh, I've I've used a, a slightly bigger font and I've used red color. So the value remains the same, but the format of the cell is now slightly different. So uh, whenever you store data into Excel, uh, whenever uh, data gets stored into a cell in Excel, uh, it has got two parts. There is a value and then there's a format component. Now we have to remember this because, especially when we deal with a lot of data, uh, this becomes very important. Now, uh, uh, how do you understand what is the format which has been assigned? Okay, how do we understand which is the format that has been assigned? So this you can understand by right clicking on your cell. Okay, you have to right click on your cell and then you have to scroll down to what is referred to as the format cell option. You have to scroll down to what is referred to as the format cell option. So I'll repeat that once again. Right click, format cell. And if you look at the first option that says under number, here you would be able to understand which, what is the format that has been applied. Okay. What is the format that has been applied over here? So there are various formats which are defined in Excel by default, general, number, currency, etc. Now each of these you would be using for a specific purpose. Okay, each of these uh, we would be using for a specific purpose. Now, general, unless and until you're not very sure about what exactly has to be stored, you could use the general format option. But if you were to use des uh, if you were to use numbers, especially when you have to deal with decimals, in such cases you will have to apply the format of uh, numbers. So let me just give you a quick demonstration. I'm going to right click. Uh, I'm going to go to format. I'm going to select the format as number and I have an option to define the number of decimals that I would like to use and this we can change by default Excel gives uh, gives an option of two uh, but I can change this okay so and I'm going to say okay now if you'd notice uh, my format in the cell changed immediately so now Excel is understanding that in this particular cell I am looking forward in storing numbers and I'm also keen on using decimals. Um, so uh, I have an option of uh, changing this also. I can go back to format and let's say I want to use eight decimal points. So change that to eight and you'd notice that Excel immediately makes the corresponding changes in the, sh in the cell. Okay. Now this is very important because especially when we are dealing with complex complex uh, calculations, complex uh, computations. And we, have, we give a lot of emphasis to the decimal points. In such cases, we've, we will have to utilize this effectively. Now, what, let's say if I want to store currency, I want to store, uh, I, I want to store currency values. So in such cases, what I would do is go back and change the format, click on format cell, select currency, and then say okay and then now if you notice immediately excel brought in the rupee simple now um, excel has understood that i'm looking forward in storing um, storing currency values over here and that's the reason why uh, uh, excel has immediately applied the uh, the, uh, the currency uh, simple over here so like this uh, there are different formats which are available and uh, each of these formats, uh, uh, it has got a significance of its own. Uh, I will not, I may not be able to cover all the formats right now, but I will be covering some important ones. Uh, time, whenever you want to store 
a, a time value you have to use the format time now whenever you want to store text and uh, this is something that you have to utilize whenever you want your numbers to start with zero so for example um, uh, then i've typed in a number over here but excel has uh, removed the zero so excel uh, understands that uh, that I uh, uh, Excel uh, the Excel understood that I have put in numerical values over here, and numerical values cannot start with zero. So that's the reason why Excel has changed that to uh, uh, change the number, uh, remove the zero, and change that to the number immediately. But what if I want to start uh, a number with zero? So in such cases, it is it would be better for me to change the cell format to text and then i would type in zero now excel is accepting or excel is recognizing uh, the zero because excel has understood i'm not really looking forward in storing numbers but uh, i want to store text so you can use this functionality whenever you want to store uh, numbers where uh, where you want to start with zero one uh, zero custom uh, is is an option that you would be utilizing uh, in Excel, whenever you want to give a, a unique formatting of your own, okay. So uh, if there are some there are some um, examples which are given over here, and you could use that. And also, I'll just quickly give you a demonstration of this date functionality, a date format. Now, there are Excel by default has defined some date formats over here, and if I were to apply the format. Then what Excel will do is Excel will will show me the corresponding values over here. So now I want, though I am displaying date here, I want the day of the date to be mentioned as well. So I just change the format, and Excel has uh, has applied the change in format to the cell and started dis displaying the corresponding values. Now uh, you, we have to remember this to ensure appropriate. Uh, format is applied because uh, when we want certain desired parts of uh, uh, values to be stored we have to ensure the appropriate format is applied now i'll just give you a quick example here of what i just mentioned uh, here i have typed in date and i've mentioned a number which is 43968 in one shot, if you were to observe this, this may seem to be a number to you. But look what happens the moment I change the format. Right click, format, and let me change this to date format. And I say, okay, what Excel has done is, um, Excel has brought in 17th of May 2020. Now, how did that happen? Uh, you have to remember that Excel is a, a computer made, it's a man-made software. It does not understand human language. It, it tries to interpret what we are trying to, uh, uh, it is trying to interpret, our hu it's trying to convert our human language into machine language. So in machine language, 43,968 corresponds to the date of 17th of May, 2020. Okay, so, uh, but Excel does not understand that I'm, I'm, I'm interested in storing date over here. So I have to let Excel know that in this particular cell, what I'm keen on uh, storing is date. So only then Excel will, will, will help me or will allow me to store the date in that particular cell. Another example, if you look at the next cell, um, we have a, a decimal number, which is 0 0.5013 and it goes on. Okay. Now, look what happens if I were to change the format. So let me change the format and let me bring in the time format over here. And I say, okay, uh, the time immediately changed. It is recognizing it as 12 2. Now, uh, what happened was in terms of machine language, this is the corresponding numerical value for, for that time, which is 12, uh, 12 hours and 12, 2 minutes. The moment I change the format, Excel has understood that in this particular cell, I am interested in storing. Uh, I'm interested in storing uh, time value. So whenever we work with Excel, we have to ensure that the appropriate, uh, uh, the appropriate. Uh, uh, format is applied uh, also at this point of time i have a request to the participants uh, uh, a number of you are 
are putting in a number of questions onto the chat box. So what I request you to do is you could make a note of your questions towards the end of our training session. We shall dedicate or we shall allocate some time uh, for the question and answers and then I will be able to uh, uh, answer some of the questions uh, back then. Okay. So uh, uh, the key takeaway from this particular sheet is this, whenever you work on Microsoft Excel, you have to ensure that, that you uh, apply the appropriate formatting to the cell to uh, ensure that we get the desired output. Uh, if you don't end up get, uh, applying the appropriate format, sometimes Excel may not really recognize what is it that we want to work with. Now, there is another, uh, uh, beautiful function in Excel, which is called a space special. Now, normally, uh, when we were to uh, copy or paste, we will use Control C and Control V. So, Control C is for copying, and then Control V is for pasting. Okay, Control C is for copying, and Control C is for which is which is a universal functionality that we will be using across uh, different softwares, irrespective whether it is Excel or Microsoft Word, Microsoft PowerPoint Publisher. This is a unique functionality that that we can uh, apply across various softwares. Now, the moment we use Control C and control V, what is happening is that Excel in the background, uh, in the backdrop, they are copying the value as well as the format. Okay, They are copying the value as well as the format. So the moment you press control V, what happens is Excel is pasting the format as well as the value. Excel is, is, is applying, uh, is pasting the value as well as the format. Now, if you'd notice, uh, the next cell, which is A2, I've applied the same value, but with a different format. And it goes on until the end. So all these cells that you see here on this particular screen, or in this particular Excel sheet, uh, paste special, uh, what, what is happening over here is that Excel, uh, I've, I've stored in the same value with different formats. Now, if I were to scroll away to any of the cells and I were to paste, what Excel is doing simultaneously is that Excel is copying the value as well as pasting, uh, the uh, copying and pasting the value as well as the format. But there are certain scenarios where I'm interested only in the value. I'm not interested in the format. So in such cases, we have to use a functionality which is called as paste special. Okay, we have to use a functionality which is called as paste special. Now, how do we use a uh, paste special? We copy this with by using the shortcut key control C. Okay, we go to the cell where we, we desire we desire the uh, value to be uh, value to be pasted right click uh, please look out for this option that says paste special okay so i'll repeat that once again copy the value control and c move to the cell where you desire to paste the value right click on your mouse okay right click on your mouse you will get a toggle menu like this and look out for paste special okay please look out for paste special. Click on this and you get an option like this. So Excel uh, not only allows me to copy and paste uh, the value and the format, but it will help me or it will allow me to uh, uh, copy and paste multiple things. So this I'll discuss a little later, but I'll quickly touch upon what I was talking, which was value. So I'm going to select value from here. Uh, by default, all is selected. I will have to change that to value. And then I say, okay. And what Excel has now done is Excel. Uh, now, if you notice the, the place from where I copied my data, uh, uh, it was the font was white in color. It had a green background and it had a, a dark green border. But when I came and pasted here, Excel has, has ignored the format and Excel has only applied the value. Okay, so 
this is a functionality that we can use when we are dealing with complex data and we would like to copy only the value but we are not interested in for now you can utilize this option where uh, different people may have worked with your sheet and they may have applied different formatting but you're not interested in those formattings um, you you want only the value to be copied in such cases you could use utilize this formula now um, i could apply this functionality to a range of data as well okay. so in excel uh, when you select uh, a, a number of data together it is referred to as a range Okay. This is referred to as a range. So here I've copied this entire range and I'm going to say control C and I'm going to say control V. Uh, I'm going to come to this particular cell, right click, paste special, and then I click on value and then I say, okay, notice what Excel has done for me. Excel has has a, copied only the value. Here in all the source data, I had applied multiple formats, but Excel has not considered any of those multiple formats. The Excel has not considered any of those formattings. Excel has copied only the, the raw value for me, and I've pasted the raw value over here. Yeah, so this is a beautiful functionality that you can use, especially uh, when you come across complex data where multiple people may have worked on it and they may have put in a lot of fancy colors, fancy fonts. They have, may have altered the chain. Instead of sitting and manually editing one by one, you could use this paste uh, special functionality. Now, a paste special functionality can be applied for another reason also. Uh, uh, now here in, in this particular sheet that I'm working, I'm really interested in this format. Okay? I'm really interested in this particular format. It is a beautiful color combination, gray color font, yellow color background. And I would like to apply this to this particular cell, E1, we have entered the value data analysis. Okay, where I've entered the value as data analysis. So I like to bring in this formatting over here. So how do I do this? I would come here, control C, okay, come, come to the desired cell. So for me, in, in this case, it is E1, okay, right click, paste special. This time, I want only the format to be applied. Okay, this time I want only the format to be applied. So in this case, what I would do is I would select the format option. Okay, I would select the format option and then I'm going to say OK. So now, now notice what Excel in a made my cell A3 and applied that in E1. Okay, but my value has not changed. My value. Uh, whatever value was previously applied to E1, it is remaining as it is. So uh, data analysis was my value. Excel has copied the formatting, which was, uh, which was there in A3, brought that to e, uh, E1 and has applied over there. Now we could try this for another cell. Now let's try this for A6. I'm really interested in this particular formatting. I'm going to say control C here come to E1, right click, paste special, format, okay, and then I'm going to say okay. So notice now here the formatting changed again. Okay, Excel has applied whatever formatting that I've applied in this particular cell to E1. Okay, so this is a beautiful functionality that you can use. You could also use this um, when you want to um, um, uh, especially in terms of um, uh, when working out with fonts and different colors, you could use this uh, paste special functionality. Now, the, the, the usage of uh, paste special does not uh, stop with that. Uh, I could use it for a number of reasons. Now, if, uh, if, please, if, I would, if you would scroll over to this particular place where I've entered the, 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 the marks for three subjects, subject one, subject two, subject three, and I've put in a formula. So I will touch upon the formula a little later, but I just want to talk about how paste special can be applied for formulas also. 
Okay, so here I have put in a formula for calculating the total. Excel has totaled up these three uh, uh, these three marks for me, and it has given me the total as two thirty nine. Now I have another need in this particular place where I want Excel to calculate the total. Uh, of these three uh, columns and give me the total over here. Now I have obviously have an option where I could type in the formula uh, and then carry out the operation that I desire. But in this case, since I have the formula readily available over here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy the formula from here and I'm going to apply this over here. So what I'm going to do is Control C on column K or on cell K2. Scroll down to K7, right click, paste special, and then say value, and then I say OK. So I'm sorry, um, right click, paste special. Now, since I'm interested only in the formula, uh, I will say, I will, I will scroll and change this to formula, and, and then, uh, and then, I say OK. Now notice Excel has brought in uh, the formula that I had applied in the previous cell and it has applied the formula here for me. It has totaled up uh, these three columns, these three, uh, uh, the values in these three cells and it's given me the total. Now if I were to blindly do Control C and Control V, uh, sorry, if I were to do if I were to execute the same functionality with control C space special and then I say value and say okay now what Excel has done is Excel has copied the value which was here and pasted it to here but that's not what I desire what I desire is that I want the formula to be applied here so control C scroll over to here right click paste special formula and then say okay Okay, so Excel has brought in that formula over here. It has applied the formula here and it has given me the total. Okay. And the total of these three uh, cells is 10. There is one more functionality for which that we can use. Um, okay, so uh, please, all of you, I request all of you to quickly scroll on to the next sheet, which is paste special two. Okay, paste special two. Now imagine as an academician or as a faculty member, I'm given uh, this particular table and I, I'm expected to uh, sit and enter. Now, if you notice in each of these cell, uh, it's a different formatting which has been applied. Maybe for my reporting purpose or my for my report generation purpose, I've been asked to change the format, uh, make sure that it's a uniform format throughout. Now, instead of sitting and manually changing all this together, what I could do is I could copy this entire uh, table like this select the entire table so you could select by using the left click of your mouse select this uh, control C okay and then go to the place where you want this to be applied uh, or where you want to paste this right click paste special and then I say values and then I say okay now Excel has brought down the table as it is but if you would have noticed Excel has omitted all the previous formattings that uh, that uh, that has that I had not previously that was there in my previous table it has omitted it has left out all the previous formattings okay now there's one more functionality for which that we could use um, uh, pay special for we could use this for transposing data okay now imagine in excel if you would like to convert columns to rows and rows to columns um, if you would like to convert uh, columns to rows and rows to columns uh, what we would end up doing is we would end up manually sitting and typing all this so what i would do is uh, accounts um, marketing so I will have to sit and type like this, but this is this will this will consume a lot of my time. So what I would do is I could use the paste special functionality. So what I would what I can do over here is copy the table as it is, Control C, go to the place where I desire, right click, I would say paste special, and select values, and you would notice we here there's an option that says transpose if there's an option that says transport i will put a check mark over there 
So I'll repeat that once again. Copy the table, Control C, right click, paste special, click on value, and then please apply a check mark to this transpose option. Okay. You will get an option to put a check mark over there. So put a check mark over there and then say OK. And if you would notice, now what Excel has done is Excel has converted all my columns to rows and rows to columns. So instead of sitting and manually uh, transposing the table, I could make Excel do the job for me. Okay. So what, what Excel has now done is Excel has converted all my columns to rows and rows to columns. So I'll repeat uh, uh, the steps once again. Copy the entire table. Control C. Right click. Paste special. Value. And then put a check mark to transpose and then say OK. Now Excel has transposed my entire data. Excel has uh, made the columns to rows and rows to columns. Okay, so um, this is a beautiful functionality of Excel that we can use, especially when we are handling a lot of data, and especially when we are handling with data with respect to uh, research, especially when we are dealing with questionnaire computation and all that. This is one functionality where we can use for transposing our, uh, the data that we have con uh, collected in questionnaires and we would have, may have entered into uh, a spreadsheet and we want, now, we want to now uh, change the rows to columns. You could, you could use this functionality. Okay, so this is uh, this is uh, 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 this functionality is called as transpose. Now, next, uh, 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 next that next we will move on to the next sheet. The next sheet is where uh, we will be dealing with what is called as a range. Okay, we will be dealing with what is called as a range. Now, range. Uh, and let me just quickly bring up the PPT also. So, um, for the benefit of uh, uh, benefit of all the participants, at the end of the FTP, I shall be sharing the presentation with you. And the presentation, I have uh, I have uh, explained the steps. So, just in case at a later stage, if at all you were to uh, you were to work out with, and if you were to have doubts, you could refer to the. So, this is the uh, explanation of pay special. We've already done with this. Now. Uh, in, in Excel, range is referred to as an array. So array is, a, a, an, a, is, it is a series of similar data. Okay? It is a table that contains similar data. Now, there are, there are different kinds of ranges that we can have in Excel. Uh, Excel, we can have what is called as irregular range. So you, you select multiple cells which are not in a sequence. It is referred to as an irregular range. Uh, then you have what is called as a symmetrical range. So symmetrical ra uh, ranges are those ranges are those arrays which are in a series, okay? which are in a series. Now I'll quickly go back to the Excel sheet to explain this to you. Now, whenever we want to define, uh, whenever we want to define, okay, let me br quickly bring up uh, the ex uh, Excel for you. Uh, whenever we want to uh, select a, um, a symmetrical array, or uh, what we have to do is we have to use the control uh, control key of our keyboard and then select the cells that we desire. So here, this is my asymmetrical array where I have selected multiple cells across the screen. So all the cells that you see which are grayed out, these are cells that I have selected. So this is what is referred to as a, uh, a irregular range. Okay? This is referred to as a irregular range. Uh, now irregular range, I'll repeat that once again. Irregular range, you would select by using control key on your keyboard and uh, press on to the control key and then you have to select the multiple cells across 
across your Excel sheet and all the cells that are getting selected here, all these are part of my irregular range. Okay, all these are part of my irregular range. Now, let me explain to you what is meant by a symmetrical range. Now, a symmetrical range refers to a, a array which is in series. Now, notice over here, I have the marks of some students which are uh, which are defined. Okay. Now, these are the names of the students and these are the corresponding marks. Now, the marks that you see over here, starting from B2 all the way down to B30, this is a symmetrical range. Okay. This is the symmetrical range. So, all, now here, if you'd notice, all the marks are uh, defined in a proper array. It is defined in a, in, a, in a specific sequence. Notice the name. Name is all defined in my column A. Marks are all defined in my column B. So this is referred to as a symmetrical range. So my column A is a symmetrical range of names. My column B is a symmetrical range of marks. My column A is a symmetrical range of names. My column B is a symmetrical range of marks. Now in Excel, now we are moving on to the next, uh, the next sheet, which is named range, okay? which is named range. Now in Excel, uh, we have an option where we could define ranges. Okay? We could define ranges. So what we would do uh, uh, what we would do is uh, now imagine here uh, I have I have the accounts marks okay I have the accounts marks and um, the accounts marks are in the uh, in in the range of B5 to B8 okay so starting from B5 to B8 so this is my range of accounting marks now um, I know that my accounting marks are in B5 to B range, but I want this range to have a unique name. Okay? I want this to have a unique name. So what I can do is in my menu bar, you have to select the option that says data. Okay? You have to select the option that says, okay, I'm so sorry. Uh, you have to select the option that says formulas. So sorry, if you have to select the option that says formula and you would see an option that says name manager. You would see an option that says name manager. Okay, so click on that. So I'm just going to quickly delete on this because this was, this was what was there from the previous sheets. Just to make sure that all of you don't get confused, I'll quickly delete them off. Now I want to define a new range uh, of my accounts mark. So I would say I have to click on the option that says new, okay? And I'm going to give this a name. So I'm going to say accounts. And then I have to let Excel know uh, when I talk about accounts, which is the cell range it must refer to, okay? So, uh, so I give the name under the names section as, as accounts and then I will have to scroll over to refers to, and this is where I have to define the range. So I have to click on this particular button, this arrow button over here, select it like this, okay, select it like this, and then say, okay. okay. Now, if you notice, uh, Excel has uh, selected uh, accounts and, and, and the marks of accounts, it has defined from B5 to B8. It is defined from B5 to B8, and then I say okay, okay, and then it is it is getting stored. And I will say close. Now, anywhere in my workbook, whenever I want to refer back to those accounts marks, I just have to say I can call them with the range accounts. So I want now the sum of the sum of all these. Uh, four marks. So instead of saying is equal to sum followed by the range, what I would do is I would I would call on the range that I had defined, which was accounts, and then I will close the bracket and then I will say. So now what as Excel has understood is that um, when I talk about accounts, 
the name that I've given as accounts, I'm talking about the mark in these in in this in this four columns. So like this, uh, in in Excel, you have an option of defining your own um, ranges, and you can assign unique names to those ranges, and you can call on those ranges, especially when you want to apply formulas. Okay, so you have an option of uh, defining a unique uh, names for your ranges. So you could, I, as 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 a, as another example, let me try and define a range for the HR marks. So what I would do is, uh, I would have to go to formulas section, okay, formulas section, name manager, and then I would select new. Let me give a name here. Let me give this as HR. Okay, and then refers to, I'll have to click on this arrow button and then define my range. Okay, so in this case, the HR marks are in D5 to D8. Okay, D5 to D8. Okay, and then I say, okay. So Excel has now created a new range for me, which says HR. So anywhere in my Excel, if I were to call, talk about that HR, um, Excel has understood that I am talking about this particular range okay so excel has understood that i'm talking about this particular range so uh, this is another functionality that you can use for complex uh, computations complex now we will move on to the next sheet where we have to understand uh, cell referencing okay we have to understand uh, cell referencing so uh, there are two kinds of referencings that we have uh, there are two kinds of references that we have in Excel, uh, what we call as relative reference, and the other is called as absolute reference. Okay, it uh, first is called as relative reference, and the other is called as absolute reference. So here, uh, imagine I want to calculate the total price. Now, the formula to calculate my total price in this case would be quantity into uh, price. Okay, it will be quantity into price. So I'm going to tell Excel, you have to multiply uh, quantity, which is B3, and multiply this with uh, price. So price is in C3. Okay, so I've defined the cell addresses. So whenever we start off with formulas, we always start off with is equal to B3 uh, into C3 and then press enter. Uh, Excel has done the calculation here for me. Now I want Excel to apply the same formulas uh, uh, for all the remaining three cells also. Okay? I want Excel to apply the same for the remaining three cells also. So in this case, what we could what you could do is just type in the formula onto one. Uh, formulas, uh, we will be, uh, please uh, do not worry, just in case if you didn't follow the formula part, uh, tomorrow the entire day, we will be allocating exclusively for formulas. So we will be dealing with functionalities over there as well. So uh, I've defined this and I want the same formula to be applied, but notice uh, as and with change with my row, the, the value should also change. So if I were to calculate the total price in D4, Excel should look at B4 and C4. Okay? It should look at B4 and C4. So to ensure that Excel applies absolute reference, I just type in the formula once, uh, you would notice that there, there, is, there is a small dot over here at the, at the right bottom corner of my cell. Select that and drag that down. Okay, select that and drag that down. So notice Excel has uh, applied the formula despite, uh, has applied the formula perfectly despite a change in, uh, despite a change in the uh, cell references. Okay, despite a change in a cell. So what Excel has done over here is, Excel has done what is called as relative reference. So when Excel came down to D6, my, uh, my Excel has understood that it has to look at B6 and it has to look at C6 to calculate the total price over here. So this is referred to as absolute, uh, so this is referred to as relative reference.
Okay, this is referred to as relative reference. Now we'll talk about another scenario where we have to calculate the total incentives for um, the, the sales executives. So in my sales column that you see on the screen, um, we, we have the sales uh, output of, uh, of our sales representatives. Okay, we have this sales uh, which has been carried out by the sales representatives and the incentive uh, would be uniformly decided by the management. However, in this case, uh, the the incentive is uniquely uh, it, it is unique for all these four uh, representatives. Uh, each representative is not having a different incentive rate. All of them are having the same uh, incentive rate. So in this case, I cannot expect Excel uh, to do a relative reference. So if I were to do a relative reference, notice what is happening. If I were to do exactly what I did in the previous case. Uh, notice it has given me an error. Now what has happened over here is when, when I try dragging down my formula, uh, Excel is looking at sales which is mentioned in B2 but uh, B12 and uh, the incentive rate uh, it should have picked up from B9 but since by default it is, it is looking at a, a, a relative reference, uh, it, has, it has gone to sales sales column okay so that now this is numerical this is text so which cannot be multiplied so in this case i will have to use what is called as absolute reference so in the four uh, cases where i'm calculating the total incentive of my sales executives excel has to look at b9 to understand what is the incentive rate that i have fixed Okay, Excel will have to look at B9 to figure out the incentive rate. So in this case, I'm going to use absolute reference and absolute reference is defined using dollar symbol. So how do I do this is equal to sales. It has to pick up from, uh, from, from the sales column into into uh, dollar B again dollar nine. Okay, so now this is my absolute reference for the incentive rate. Okay, this is my absolute reference for the in incentive rate. Now I'm just going to try and drag this down. Now notice now Excel has calculated uh, the incentive rates. Uh, the total incentive perfectly. Now, why it has happened over here? Now, let's look at the last formula where we were calculating for John. So, in the case of John, Excel has understood it has to pick up the sales output from uh, from from B14. However, incentive rate has to be picked up from B9, okay, which is the absolute reference. Since I have applied this with dollar signs. Excel has not changed even though uh, I tried that dragging the formula down. Excel has not changed. Um, Excel has retained the absolute reference as it is and it has calculated the incentive rate. So depending on our data structure, depending on our computation requirements, there are scenarios where we will have to use relative reference in Excel. There are scenarios where we have to use absolute reference in Excel. Absolute reference we will apply with the help of dollar symbol. So I hope uh, this makes sense. Now we are moving on to the next functionality. The next functionality is what is called as autofill. Okay, so oh, I request all of you uh, to please scroll over to uh, uh, the autofill uh, uh, sheet. Please, all of you, scroll over to the sheet that says autofill. Uh, some of you have uh, have been trying to ask questions, uh, but uh, respecting the time of everyone in the uh, in in the group uh, uh, who are joined in online, I, I will be taking the questions only towards the end of the session. In that way, we will respect everyone's time, and we will also make sure that there is a fair chance uh, for everyone to uh, to put forward your questions. Okay, now. Uh, uh, there are certain situations where we would need Excel, uh, where we would need to uh, type in numbers which are in a series. 
So for example, here, uh, imagine I have to type one, two, three uh, until let's say 20. Okay. So one obvious way by which I could do this is I could type in manually. Okay. I could type in all this manually until 20. But instead of doing that, I could make Excel do the job for me. Okay. I could make Excel do this job for me instead of me having to sit and type. Uh, so I will type in the first maybe one, two or three series and the number. And then I will uh, select the series like this. Okay, so type in maybe one or two, three, one or two entries in the series and select the series like this. Now notice, now notice I would have got a, a, a dot button and the moment I scroll my mouse over it, it changes to a plus sign. Okay, so I'll repeat that once again. Um, I've, I've typed in uh, the first three series in the number. Okay. And uh, I have selected this range. Now, how do I select the range? I would select it by clicking on left, uh, left button of my mouse, scroll down like this. And then using my mouse again, I'm going to scroll over to this, uh, this dot that I see at the right bottom corner. Okay. And I'm going to drag it down like this. Now, the moment I drag it down, Excel has understood that I'm trying to complete a series. Okay. Excel has understood that I'm trying to complete a series and Excel is filling out the remaining numbers for me. So I could, I could continue with this autofill option until the numbers that I desire. So here, now imagine I had a situation where I had to type in numbers until 500. Instead of me manually sitting and typing in until 500, I've made Excel do the job for me. Okay. So Excel has, uh, I've used the autofill option uh, and I have used uh, the autofill option and I have taught, I've told Excel that you have to complete the series for me and Excel has done, and uh, Excel has done that for me. Okay. So whenever you use the autofill option, it is very important for you to explain to Excel what is it that you desire. Okay, or how exactly are you trying to take this series forward? So here in this particular example, I am um, uh, I'm putting in numbers uh, uh, 1 plus 3, 1 plus 2, uh, 3 plus 2, 5 plus 2, goes on like that. Okay, so instead of me having to sit and type in the numbers manually, I'm going to make Excel uh, complete the series here for me. So Excel has understood that I'm looking at adding uh, two to every subsequent number in the series and it has complete the remaining for me. Okay. So uh, whenever you use the autofill option, it is very important for you to let Excel know what, ex what is the exact sequence that you desire to follow. And it is important for you to uh, let Excel know. So you have to fill in probably the first two or three numbers in the series so that Excel fills in the rest for you. Now, uh, I'm going to, uh, now I could use this option for multiple, uh, 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 multiple cases. Now let's talk about a scenario where I've typed in a date over here and I'm just going to try and drag this down like this. So Excel is, is trying to understand that I'm trying to complete the date series. Okay. Excel has understood that I'm trying to complete the date series. So what Excel has done is uh, Excel has completed the series for me. So I'll repeat that once again. I, f I typed in the first date of my series. I come down to the uh, right bottom corner of my cell. And as soon as uh, I hover my mouse over it, notice that my mouse cursor has changed to a plus sign. And I drag, I'll have to drag it down like this. And the moment I drag it down like this, Excel is completing the series for me. Okay, Excel is completing the series for me. Now let's talk about another situation where I want the day of the month to be fixed, but I want the months to be different. Okay, I want the day to be fixed. I want it to be first, but I want the months to be different. So if I were to do this by default, then Excel will only change the first day of the month. But if I want to change the, uh, the month, then I have to let Excel know, uh, maybe I'll just fill in one more series in, the, uh, uh, in this, and then I will do the same. Okay, I will do the same. 
select this range, scroll down to the right bottom corner and drag it down like this. Now, when I completed the first two series in the number, Excel understood that I wish to retain the day of the day of the month. However, I want the month to change. So Excel has applied its logic. It has understood this is what I desire and it has it has completed the remaining sequence for me. Okay, it has completed the remaining sequence for me. Now, another scenario, I want the day, I want the month to be the same, but I want the year to change. Okay, I want the day and the month to be the same, but I want the year to change. So in this case, what I would do is, I would, I would have to let Excel know what is it that I desire. And what I desire is this, I want the day and the month to be the same. However, I want the year to change. So. I've completed the first two numbers in the series and I'm going to drag it down like this. So now what Excel has done is, Excel has understood, I want the day, I want the month to be fixed. However, I want the year to change. So Excel has completed the remaining, uh, the remaining entries in my series depending on the logic that I have applied. Excel has completed the remaining numbers in the series depending on the logic that I have applied. Okay, so uh, this is a wonderful option that we can use. Now let's let's talk about some uh, other scenarios where we would be using uh, the uh, the autofill option. Now let's talk about time. Now here I have I've entered the first uh, the first entry in the series, which is twelve a.m. And I am going to drag this down like this. So what as Excel has understood is um, Excel has completed the remaining series for me by changing the R. Okay. Excel has completed the remaining, uh, the remaining uh, entries in the series by changing the R. But this is not what I want. I want intervals of 10 minutes. Okay. I want intervals of 10 minutes. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to complete maybe one or two numbers in the series by letting Excel know I'm looking at completing my series uh, in, in time intervals of 10 minutes. So I've entered the first two numbers. I'm going to select this range. I'm going to scroll down to the right bottom corner. Um, the moment the cursor changes to plus sign, uh, click on it and then drag it down like this. Okay, drag it down like this. Now, notice Excel has completed the remaining numbers in the series uh, depending on what I desired. Excel understood that I'm looking for time intervals of 10 minutes and it has completed the remaining numbers in this series for me. Now, imagine if I were to uh, pick up 15 minutes interval. Okay, if I were to pick up 15 minutes interval, so what I would do now is I would complete maybe the first two entries, uh, 12 and then 12.15 select the range, um, go down and then ensure that the autofill option turns up, uh, the cursor changes to plus sign and then drag it down like this and notice Excel has completed the remaining numbers in the series, the remaining times, uh, time entries in the series, they are in intervals of 15 minutes. Okay. So, uh, so whenever you, uh, you were to bring about uh, filling in the series in a desired way, it is important for you to let Excel know the logic. So for which you have to enter maybe one or two numbers. Now let's try with, with the day, days of the week. So I've typed in Monday here. Let's see what happens if I were to select this and drag it down like this. Now notice Excel has understood that I'm looking at filling in the names of days of the month. Oh, sorry, days of the week. So it has, I just typed in Monday and then Excel filled in the rest for me starting from Monday. And then notice it is following a seven day week format. Okay. Now, um, it, since uh, now for certain series, there are some inbuilt uh, programs which are fed into Excel. And notice in this case, um, it is giving me some more options. Okay. So if I were to come down and select this drop down, it is giving me some more options. So here, um, if I want only uh, weekdays, okay. So notice now what Excel has done is like Excel has skipped um, um, Saturdays and Sundays from the series because I've let Excel know now what I'm desiring is not the all the seven days a week. I'm just looking at weekdays. 
which is five, five, five days a week. Uh, uh, in the case of some series, which is not the not for all the is this some series. Now let's one uh, access we now is under that I'm looking at filling in this the series uh, with days of the month and uh, it has filled in the remaining numbers in the series. So this is uh, this is a wonderful op that that uh, that we we could use uh, to uh, to fill. Now um, now imagine um, uh, I've I've typed in a number here a zero one. Let me just try and drag and drop this down like this. So Excel has understood that that. Uh, Excel has filled in the, the remaining numbers in the series uh, uh, by by changing or by applying autofill uh, to the uh, to the to the numerical values in my series. Okay, so this functionality in Excel is called as autofill. Okay, uh, now there's another beautiful functionality which is called as flash fill, which works a little similar to autofill. Uh, so for for, you, for all of you to understand this, I request all of you to please quickly scroll over to the next sheet, which is the flash fill uh, sheet. All of you, please scroll over to flash fill uh, sheet. Okay. Now here, uh, I have the names of some students and, and what has happened over here is the names have been now separated. Now I have a need where I have all, I, I need all the names to be combined together. Okay, I need all the names to be combined together. That is, I here in this D two, uh, I want first name, I want the middle name, and I want the last name to reflect. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to type in Joy Noel space Zach and John. So I filled in the first one, and I'm going to do this for the next one. Uh, but notice, uh, I have something. Uh, some something has happened to my screen. So Excel has understood there is a logic that I'm trying to follow with respect to my data entry. Okay, so there's a logic that that Excel has understood that I'm trying to follow with respect to my data entry. So Excel has filled in the remaining values. All that I have to do over here is press a down arrow key and, and there it goes. Excel has completed the remaining values automatically for me. So Excel has actually saved me a lot of trouble instead of sitting and typing uh, all these names manually. So Excel has saved me uh, uh, trouble of sitting and entering all these values um, uh, manually. Okay, um, I think I've exceeded my time, but I think is, is that okay if I take another maybe ten to fifteen minutes uh, so that I could just I've, I've got a little bit more to complete with respect to uh, uh, to this uh, flash fill, and uh, and then I will also spare maybe a few minutes for question and answers, and and then we can wind up with this session. Okay, and then we can wind up with the session. So I, I'll repeat this once again. Um, here I have a, I have an odd situation where I have been given the first name, middle name, and last name. Now notice all these names have been given to me in separate columns. Okay, all these names have been given to me in separate columns. I have been asked to type them onto this column, which is D3, uh, such that I have all the three names together. Okay, so what I would do is I would type in the first name here for me for here. Okay, so Noel, Zach, John, and then I move on to the next one. I start typing in next. Now Excel has understood there is a logic that I'm trying to follow with respect to the data series, and it has populated uh, the remaining series. It is asking me a question: Is this what I desire? So for me to give Excel a confirmation, yes, this is exactly what I want. All that I have to do is press the arrow, down arrow key on, on my keyboard and Excel has completed the remaining uh, entries in the series for me. So this functionality in Excel is called as flash fill. Okay, this functionality is called as flash fill. Now I'm just going to make a slight change. Now there's a different logic I'm trying to follow. 
Okay. Now I'm going to the first alphabet. I'm going to put that in uppercase. The remaining I'm going to retain that in lowercase. This time I'm not going to enter the middle name. I'm going to quickly move on to the last name and last name as well. I'm going to apply with the same logic uh, where I'm using uppercase for the first letter and the remaining in small letter. Okay, so I've entered the first one. Let me try for the next one. Now notice as soon as I tried typing in, Excel is again asking me a question, is this what I'm looking at? Now notice Excel has understood my previous logic. So I'm just going to press the down arrow key. Now here Excel has filled in the remaining values in my series exactly based on the logic that I was trying to apply. Okay, so Excel is trying to follow, it, it, is, it is in sync with me. It is trying to follow the logic that I'm trying to apply. So it has retained the first letter of every name in uppercase, the remaining in lowercase. It is understood I'm not interested in their middle names. I want, I'm interested in their surnames or last name and it has completed the remaining series for me. Now I will show you another scenario. Here, I'm going to type in the first name. Instead of middle name, I'm going to use the initial. I'm not going to type in the full name. I'm just going to retain the initial. Okay. And let's see what, let's see if Excel is able to understand my logic. Okay. And I'm just going to follow. Okay. As soon as I ty started typing in Excel, understood there's a logic that I'm trying to follow. And so I'm going to let Excel know, yes, this is exactly what I want. So I'm going to press on. Uh, the arrow key on my keyboard and I've given Excel a confirmation. So for the remaining all the names, Excel has beautifully applied the same logic that I was trying to use. It has used the first name, it has taken only the initial from the middle name and it has, uh, it has added the last name. Okay, so this functionality of flash fill you can use for, uh, for typing out complex uh, values. Okay, the only thing that you have to remember is that uh, flash will fill, uh, the option of flash fill will be given to you only if Excel is able to understand the logic that you are able to follow, uh, that logic that you're trying to apply. Okay, so the, the option of flash fill will get provided to you only if Excel understands the, the logic that you're trying to follow in, in, in processing the data entry. So Excel by default will try and, and provide. So uh, maybe I'll give you another example. Here I'm going to type in the first name and, I and for the last name I'm just you're going to use the first thing. And notice now what Excel has done is Excel has understood my logic. So the moment Excel understood the logic that is when it will give me the flash fill option and then I could give a confirmation to Excel. Okay. So this is another beautiful functionality that you could use in Microsoft Excel uh, for, uh, for, a, for the entry of complex data. Uh, so with that note, uh, I've, 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 I think I'll quickly wind up. I've covered most of what I intended uh, to cover for today. Uh, tomorrow's class, uh, again, I will be 